Hello my beautiful co-creators, Lilu here. Today I'm in Santa Cruz in California on the Juicy Living Tour again, but this time we have an extraordinary adventure ahead of us because we're si I'm sitting right now with uh, Dr. Mosen, that uh, actually Bob Zimmer introduced me, yes. introduced us uh, yeah. uh, a week ago over in San Francisco and I was just absolutely blown away first by your yes. amazing presence. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and then just, uh, and, and all the, your, the knowledge and information just pouring out of you at such a speed. So I really wanted to take the time to kind of dissect all this and, yeah. and look at your world and the type of research that you do. Yeah. What, what, tell us about you, those research, what are they? Uh, the research that I do, it kind of branches in so many different di directions, but they have a common theme mm -hmm. in all of them. And basically it's not you know, that we are trying to correct you know, or um, modify anybody's paradigm. We are trying to create a healing of the paradigms. And that healing is from the state of energetic to synergetic. Mm -hmm. Because nature operates and processes itself by a process which is based on flow of synergy. Mm -hmm. If you say everything is field and flow, when we have a field, we create a flow. And the field of biomagnetism in the nature, it induces a synergetic flow, not energetic. Okay. By contrast, mechanical system, they have energetic flow. So that's why byproduct of energetic processes, such as a car, it's not assimilative by nature, it's accumulative. So we call it entropy or pollution. Byproduct of synergetic activity by a tree, by an animal, by human, is acceptable, assimilative by nature, so we call it, call it renewability or centropical byproduct. Now, centropy, entropy becomes two coin words here. Entropy means ever-increasing disorder. Mm. Like we have in a pollution, it's ever-increasing pollution. Because byproduct of energetic activity does not assimilate, assimil it's not assimilative by nature, so it accumulates. Byproduct of synergetic activity, it's assimilative, so it goes back to the earth. Now that's why, for example, if you take the carbon dioxide from me and you, is assimilative. But carbon dioxide from uh, uh, an automobile is accumulative. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell us uh, about the world that we live in right now? So the world we live in, past a few hundred years, it's been based on energetic scientific assumption rather than uh, empirical uh, processes of the nature, which is the reality. So the science has created an illusion by certain assumption of yeah. the industrial revolution or Vedic sciences. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest uh, assumptions that, that really creates a false, uh, false uh, reality or perception of reality? The, one of the fir first false assumptions that science or Vedic science, which is the old uh, style of science, or the new one, which is Newtonian, everything is taught to us by a symbol called equation. Mm -hmm. Equation does not exist in the creation or nature. In, ev in nature, everything is progression. You put one wheat in the ground, it becomes 70. You put a corn, it becomes 700. So there is no equivocation or equivocating process in the creation of nature. So that's why synergy comes in. That's why quantum is defined as every entity is more than the sum of its constituents. Mm. But in the, uh, science, the, the illusion of science is that they say, this entity is equal to some of its. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> some no, no, of sorry. Its, uh, we have the microphone <laughs> here, so we're good. <laughs> some of its uh, constituent. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't happen in the nature. So we have to accept to be subservient to nature mm -hmm. and subordinate rather than trying to destroy the nature, you know, and that's why we have entropy. Entropy, a very increasing disorder. Uh, so the whole is not that we want to change the paradigm or uh, we want to heal the paradigm. Mm -hmm. That means that healing is if a human body goes from energetic system, let's say conventional medicine is energetic, to synergetic, which is a natural uh, product, then the body heals. Mm -hmm. There's no side effect. So it's this can go in many different branches. Many so branches, you, yeah. you, so what are some of the ones that you study personally? Well, I mean, there's 30 different disciplines that we have developed uh, uh, over the years. Um, 
and we brought this together in a, um, a school of thoughts which is called Fiversity. Fiversity, there is another uh, uh, person who is involved with this, it's myself and uh, this lady by the name of Lori Nimmer. Um, so what we are doing, there is two axes or two major pr primary principles in Fiversity. One is everything has to be synergetic, not energetic. The other one, it has to be based on phi, not pi. <laughs> mm, what yeah. do you mean by that? Phi well, not what pi. happens, you know, again, um, pi governs the circle, which again doesn't exist in the nature because Earth is not in a sphere. The index of a circular a geometry or geometry is pi but the index of a spiral or rotation uh, is phi now what happens uh, a example I can give you yeah. if you look at earth uh -huh. earth is not a sphere because anything that turns around itself the top gets a little flatter uh -huh. and the belly comes out a little bit more but by that motion of uh -huh. rotation okay now if it goes around something else, all of a sudden one end becomes a little bit more extended. So we get a kind of generic shape of a form, a form which is egg, egg uh -huh. shape. So it's not, uh, we don't have a sphere, we have a spheroid by rotation, and we have egg freud by rotation, which is a, a spiral motion of the Earth. So Earth does not go around the Earth in a circle. Uh. It goes, doesn't even go in elliptical orbit. Uh -huh. It doesn't go even in an orbit, it goes in a vorbit. In a vorbit. That means it goes in a spiral. Oh, interesting. Yeah? Because that's why no entity in creation repeats its position in time and space twice. That means everything in a soup of a spiration, vortation, and that means you know every entity in creation has three motions. One is rotation that goes around itself. And then the other one is vortation that goes around something else like sun. And then at the same time, it has everything in the uh, uh, universe has peristalsis, that means contraction and expansion. Like we breathe, we go to contraction and expansion. If that contraction and expansion doesn't exist, we are not breathing. <laughs> so that's kind of breath of life. It, it's in every entity in creation. So those three motions which is rot mo uh, rotation, vortation, and peristalsis, defines a new science that I have created past 20 some years, almost 30 years, which we call it phiometry, not geometry. Now, if I can stop the Earth from turning around itself and around the Sun, and it won't have any breathing or peristalsis, then I have a sphere. Out of a sphere, the section of that sphere is a circle, and since there is no entity in creation that without motion, we don't have a sphere or circle in the creation. So why are we creating a science which doesn't exist? So it's an <laughs> illusion of the science and lack of the reality of empirical no notion. Uh, yeah. So how to so how does that impact all those? Because you adapt this then this understanding to constructions yes. to medicine medicine yes. to what else? Yeah. I mean, every as let's say color, color therapy, we can take oh, yeah. it into color. We can take it into uh, materials. We can uh, we can have material that is responsive because yeah. if you assume that everything is vibration, we have two vibration. You are vibration. I'm vibration. We are all vib. Everything is vibration. So the the way two vibration can uh, speak to each other or have a dialect is what called is resonation. So that means if something is not vibrating, it's what? It's not resonate. It, it's not in the position to resonate. Mm -hmm. if, uh, me and you or the food that we are eating, if it doesn't have the vibration, it cannot resonate with myself mm -hmm. to give me the energy. So that exchange of things happen by resonation. Mm -hmm. And that's how the yeah. universe functions, yes, really. Yeah. If you look at all the Milky Ways and all the, you notice even planetary from micro to macro, they have they are a form of vibration yeah. that have coagulated or congealed to matter. It could be in forms of synergy, energy, or energy, or uh, or asperge. But what happens? Asperge. What's that now? 
Well, I mean, if you go to it, see what happens there, if you visualize <laughs> the light within light. Uh huh. Wow. So, synergy is conceived and given life to, like solar energy, by another form of higher thing, which is esergy. So, this gets a little more complicated. Yeah. Now. That's why, you know, light within light. Uh huh. Um, uh, sound within sound. Science Synergy. within silence? Science <laughs> is illusion of understanding based on a lot of illusionary assumption. Oh, that's science, yeah. yeah. If I was you speaking about the silence. Yeah. Mm. Oh, silence, yeah, yes. Silence yes, within yes, the yes, silence. Yes, yes, yes. So you notice you go a little deeper dimensions. Uh -huh. Or laughter within laughter, as Rumi has talked in a lot of his oh. poem, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, real laughter, it. Now, when you say something within something else, uh -huh. or something comes out of this, uh -huh. this is the process of fractalation in nature. You know, it's something, you know, um, uh, when it fractalates by implosion, it goes in, and it fractalate, uh, fractalates by explosion, it goes out. So that means everything, as long as it's not fragmented, it fractalates to infinity and eternity. So that's a continuous fractalation, which is the yeah. bless. And, and yeah. so, so on an atom yeah. level also, yeah. on an atom yeah. level, you, yeah. you, it has the yeah. same... Yeah, I mean, if uh, something that fractalates, now what happens most of, let's say, emotional issue, if it can, fract a laughter can fractalate to micro and macro. Mm -hmm. That laughter is sustainable laughter. <laughs> <laughs> same thing with light. So that's why we talk about energy. Uh, energy is actually a definition I have if you take synergy which is the process of nature and you make a GMO out of that like G we make GMO out of the seed energy is the GMO of synergy you lost me there uh, let's say you know you take a seed which is natural processes the natural processes yeah. and if I make a GMO seeds out of it which doesn't produce of itself uh -huh. that means Oh, yeah. A GMO seed has been fragmented. It cannot fractalate. That means you know, like, you know, when you put a wheat in the ground, all of a sudden it becomes 70. You put a corn, it becomes 700. Mm -hmm. So that means it's what? It's fractalating to mm -hmm. give us more. But when I put a seed in the ground GMO, it doesn't produce another one even. So it's already it's in the process of fragmentation. Mm -hmm. See, any time we have fragmentation, we have a lot of side effects. Now, let's say we have the same thing, you know, so food, energy, light, everything we want, if we want to facilitate and we want to nurture and nourish fractalation. So fractalation is continuous. So uh, the thoughts, even it's, so that's why uh, everything in nature is fractalating, mm -hmm. which is governed by synergy and centropy. In the mechanical system, which we have created by science, it's based on a lot of false assumption. Mm -hmm. That's why nature doesn't accept its byproduct. So we want to create a science which is the science of nature by empirical yeah. observation, not by experimental of science. Yeah, and that's um, re is that related to biometric then? Mm -hmm. Biometric. Yeah, biometry. You know, is yeah. Basically, you know, we are looking at the biological process rather than mechanical process because these two are paradox to each other. Yeah. Energy and synergy, there is no unified field. That's why no scientist can unify that field. If you have things between synergetic field, we can unify them together because nature is all unified. But if it's, uh, we bring mechanical system that produces a carbon dioxide which is accumulative and a, mo a biological system that produces a byproduct which is assimilated by nature, these two are opposite of each other. They don't jive. They have no yeah. speaking dialogue with them. Yeah. Tell us about water. Tell us about your study on water. Okay, water, I mean, first, you know, we have, to, when it comes to water, we have to define what's the concept of the water. The water, let's say externally, as you know, you use the water, take a shower or wash your hands. It's for the purpose of cleansing mm -hmm. or exchange of information. Now, so water is not in this paradigm is not a source of nutrients. It's a source of going and bring the nutrients which is accumulative outside the body. Mm. So you want to be able to absorb a lot more. So therefore, you know, we want 
uh, I recommend distilled water because nature provides its constituents by distilled water, which is the rain. Now, when it goes in the, the spring water and all that, it absorbs a lot of um, uh, other material oh. that they refer to it as total dissolved solid. Oh, yes. Now, total dissolved solid does not assimilate in uh, in uh, human cell because cell has to be very so the clear. higher the number is the yeah. the worse the water yeah. is isn't it we uh, should we should always check the labels huh? yeah I have all those samples up there you know if you want I can pull some of it you know so you can see uh, the water works now what happens our nervous system now the other role of water beside cleansing it's also carry a pulse yeah. from the brain into every cell we have 80 90 whatever 100 trillion cells in our body to each one of them just like a piston of a car there is a wire which is called uh, like a spark plug uh -huh. right so the pulse has to reach from the brain to fire the combustion inside the piston now if this wire that comes from distributor doesn't reach doesn't cannot deliver the pulse from the brain to the body nutrients no matter how good we eat you know the nutrients is still doesn't absorb yeah. I mean doesn't combust simple as that so the role of water it to go into the nervous system and carry the pulse from the brain into the cell to tell the cell to combust mm -hmm. just like the car mm. now what happens these microtubes which we call a nervous system is not like a wire they're all like garden hoses so the water has to trickle inside these hundred and uh, it's called hundred thousand miles of uh, nervous system we have in our body so water has to go through these to deliver the message from the brain to the cell mm -hmm. now it has to be so fine and pure because it flows in the nervous system like a garden hose one molecule at a time if you have things that you see on the shelf here you see those glasses of the when the water gets deionized as it happens in the body then it becomes sedimentation the nervous system gets clogged mm -hmm. and the message cannot reach the organ mm -hmm. so that's one of the more most essential role of water in the human body again we um i had i had heard that you can uh, uh create vortex uh, water and just at least yeah. it will re yeah. Reset yeah. its 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 yeah. its uh, its original. Yeah. Uh, how do you how do you explain? See, there is two uh, attributes with water. One is its elemental attributes mm -hmm. that has to be pure, not have other elements with it, which we call a TDS. The other one is its synergetic attributes. A lot of other people refer refer to it as energetic attributes of water. Now, energetic attributes of wa uh, water is indetermined. What it means that your thoughts, your presence, you know, your um, intention and everything, immediately, like Dr. Emoto has shown, it changes that attribute. But elemental attribute cannot be changed. So therefore, we cannot just focus on the synergetic, mm -hmm. or in their uh, vocabulary, energetic attribute of water, and totally disregard the elemental attribute. Mm -hmm. Because it goes and clogs the nervous system. Now. Let's say if you have a light bulb here and we have a switch there, let's say the switch is the brain, the light bulb is an organ, and this connection from here to the light bulb is the nerve. So if there's anything, 90% of the complication with the body is when the, this nerve and the distributor or the brain cannot connect. So that's when these nervous system gets clogged. Mm -hmm. Now pain is indication a cognition in the brain that something is blocked when I have a pain in this part of my hand that means something is not flowing so certain nerves here they report this to the brain and that report in my cognition I feel it as a pain now so what do I do I can take an aspirin or painkiller so this message that's going from here to there is diminished mm. right so mm. I don't feel it so the whole concept or paradigm is feeling versus function. Mm -hmm. All the scientific uh, uh, assumption is based to provide feeling, not function. I'm not denying that we should not have good feeling or enjoy our food and all that. But we cannot have that feeling at the cost of the function. It kills us. I mean, I can 
take all kind of drugs, you know, alcohol, da, 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 da. I say I feel good, but it's destroying every function in my body. That's how I mean, the nature of acidic food, you know, it may feel good, taste good, but it dis destroys the function of the body. And the thing is that with all those medicine, right, it's just yeah. a band-aid on something. It yeah, doesn't yeah. really it's heal. A, it's a band-aid and a strategy. Yeah. yeah. It's because, you know, we are masking yeah. this pain yeah. because I want to go dancing tonight, so I don't feel good to move. So therefore, you know, I move good, but the f there are certain functions that are suffering very drastically. Uh -huh. So we have to make a distinction between feeling and function. Feeling has to be subordinate to function, not the other way. So what's your understanding of diseases then? Where are they coming from? Well, disease is basically, uh, uh, there's two uh, great scientists that they were in um, uh, France around uh, early 1900. We have Bochamps and we had Pasteur. Uh, mm -hmm. Bochamp was uh, practicing the whole um, the host theory which came from Avicenna about a thousand years earlier. So Avicenna stated, and still you know, they used to teach these in France all over Europe in you know, his canon of health, which was based on host theory. And the host theory says that it is not the potency of the germ, but rather the strength of the host that induces a symptom. Mm -hmm. See, it's not the strength of the germ, rather the resistance or strength of the host mm -hmm. that determines the induction of a symptom mm -hmm. in the human body. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter, all the germs and microbes, everything in my body and yours and everybody else's, they are transitory. They come and go all day, I mean, are you up? I mean, now, if they find an, a certain area in my body or yours or whosoever, X, Y, Z and whatever, that is the immune system is the weakest. And also it's the most acidic. They replicate, multiply and all of a sudden they defeat our immune system. We have symptoms of that because the host could not be strong. So that's what Avicenna had host theory, but Chomp followed host theory and Pasteur came with the germ theory. Mm. Now, Pasteur was experimenting with wine, as you have seen the whole story a little bit, maybe uh, as I best I can recall. Uh, he was uh, pasteurizing wine and killing the germ. By killing the germ, the, it would stay fresh and it wouldn't rot him. So he said, well, if we can do that with the human body or anybody, we can destroy the germs then we, go, we don't get sick or we don't get rotten because sickness is basically a cell becomes from a state of alkalinization which is function to a state of acidification which doesn't function. Uh, electricity does not flow in an alkaline medium. Uh, so what happened is that if we can do that then we can get everybody healthy. So all of a sudden he equivocated killing of the germs in the wine to human body totally disregarding two primary assumptions. And those assumptions was that human body has an uh, autonomic nervous system and it has immune system which wine doesn't have it. Hmm. So all of a sudden that become a false assumption of the germ theory science which is the foundation of uh, today's uh, medical practices, you know, which was all that. Now, yeah, so you're not really in favor of vaccines, are you? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens, you know, in uh, um, <laughs> in nine, uh, Bochamp, you know, I mean, uh, Pasteur came this with 1993, 1995, uh, I mean, 1895, uh, he passed away. But before he died, he wrote a letter, which a lot of people have access to that. It was he confessed that Bochamp was correct, and he was wrong. Whoa. So that is, that's in the medical history, people will uh, search for that, it's there, you know, that he confessed that Bochamp was correct and he was wrong because uh, those two guys were adversary to each other you know <laughs> so know. the whole idea then to for you is to make the body stronger yes so that's I how that's what you yeah. do you yeah. energize you yes. synergize yes. the yes. body yeah. you you subordinate to the process of the synergetic rather than energetic so in fiversity as i mentioned earlier we have two assumptions healing of the paradigm if we change pi to phi and we change energy to synergy in our cognition and perception and our practices and lifestyle and acquired behavior, everything heals. And that can be taken into any given science. You know, we can take it to economy. I've written a, a whole uh, book of economy about 452 pages, but it hasn't published. 
it's basically if you do the same thing in an economic system the economic system heals if you do it in medicine the medicine heals in architecture architecture heals we do it in the plants agriculture soil everything heals because it's not rocket science you know um, uh, it's that's the way things are created so how do you so how do you go by healing uh, people or what's your perception on, on, on the medicine or on health how do you what what do you use you use plants a lot don't you well I mean basically uh, one of the issues is we are created to function by alkalinity mm -hmm. and process by acidity mm -hmm. what that means you know that um, uh, uh, all your magnetic and electrical function in the body needs to be in alkaline state for example, the water has to be a little bit on the alkaline side to carry the signal from the brain to a cell. But let's say in our digestive system, it processes things by acidosis. So I mean, we so it's some somehow you know we process by acidic environment, but we function by uh, alkalinity, which is magnetism and electricity. Mm -hmm. Now, if you notice, people who do plating, if the medium is not alkaline, electricity doesn't pass. So our magnetic uh, uh, field and the electric field does not work if the body is acidic. So one thing, you know, uh, we have to make sure our body is around pH of 7.4. Now that equally applies to an architecture. All the material we want in a building, you want to have a flow, a magnetic flow. I mean, sometimes, you know, airflow, if you look at it, just the process of the molecules. Now, you want to have conduction of the heat. But opposite of that, what we are doing, we put insulation so the heat cannot be conducted. It's like, you know, I press, you know, some of my nerves and that. So uh, the same principle applies to the building. We want alkaline material, paramagnetic material, and at the same time, we don't want metal in the building. So these are something that you talked about, Bob Zimmer, you know. So yeah. these are things we are um, recommending this current sta uh, status of architecture, the way they are practicing, is not healthy. It's not concurrent with natural processes. And could you tell us about these then? And then we'll go back yeah. to the health, because I really so want to hear what, more about yeah. the health part. Uh, what happens, you know, um, um, uh, this is a new way of technology that I have created, that there is 19 zeroism. It's called zeroism. Zeroism means, you know, when we say zero energy, like you've heard of that, doesn't mean zero input. Mm -hmm. So if there is no, uh, if the energy is input, you know, oil or gas or whatever, which is usually energy, any process from matter to energy is entropical. Like oil, gas, you notice when you use oil and gas and all that, use coal or whatever, nuclear, the byproduct is what? It's not acceptable by nature. Mm -hmm. But if you have solar energy, the byproduct is all acceptable. The byproduct of a tree or something is always acceptable. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important issue. We have to make a distinction of that. Now, in the building, one of so those... So this is a building? Is in, this is uh, the structure of a building. Mm -hmm. In a building, we don't want any metal. So therefore, you know, we are converting to use carbon composite. Now, carbon composite depends on its attribute. It can be anywhere from 10 to 100 times stronger. And at the same time, um, same factor, you know, could be lighter. Well, to make it clear, this is what you use on uh, the Concorde, for example. Yeah. Isn't it the same material yeah. than the Concorde? Yeah, concrete. The Concorde, the Concorde uh, plane. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. That, yeah, that's yeah, the same exactly. yes, material, yes, 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 yes. but this covering yeah. is very resistant. Yeah, well, what happens if you notice uh, past two planes, I think they call it Dreamliner 777 or Boeing 778, those are, they say, it was uh, uh, all composite carbon. You notice Mercedes has it. If you look on um, um, VW on the internet, you notice they have designed a car which is called VW one liter. And one liter goes 100 kilometers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's all carbon because it's, it's much lighter. So therefore, you know, uh, we are not using gas to move the mass of the car. and. Uh, uh, that uh, VW goes at uh, 250 some miles, you know, per two and a half or uh, three liters of gas. I mean, Mercedes has one, you know, a, a very fancy one that BMW has finished the uh, vision. 
you know, this car company, a lot of boat companies and all that, they are moving to um, uh, carbon. Right now, in America, they cannot meet the uh, needs for carbon mm -hmm. because there is no, uh, that the, the production is much be below the consumption. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the signs. Uh, so in this one, if you notice, uh, everything is phi. This building is uh, designed by three pieces, th three lengths oh, yeah. of tube. Mm -hmm. And all these tubes, they have a node. So these nodes are somehow every, uh, no matter what shape you design, they can be connected through this node. Mm -hmm. There is some restriction, you know, we don't want to get into this uh, mm -hmm. exception and all that. But basically, since, you know, you want to build a house, you order, let's say, 20 of the this size and 30 of that size, uh, three different sizes, it comes for you in the package, in the bowl. And basically, within half a day, you can put the structure of your home together. Now, this has a lot of uh, uh, application, let's say, in Africa or other places that they want to quickly put homes. And then you cover the sheet with also carbon, but now uh, electrical and all that stuff is not, I'm just talking about the structure. Yeah. So the structure of a house can be put together within about, um, within about a few hours. Not a few For months. anybody? I mean, how do For you anybody. go about it? Because of this structure there that helps you to... Because that structure, <coughs> you see all of this around this studio, you notice you can put any curves, <coughs> you can Sorry. put... Um, <coughs> any shapes or whatever you want, uh, you can um, just use the system of uh, fractilation. Um, we have another one here. Can you tell us <coughs> about yeah, this, this one? one? This one is basically is done because um, uh, pressurized greenhouse, because when we have a very airtight pressurized greenhouse, mm -hmm. then um, uh, we have a lot of activities happening with the plants. Uh, Japanese have worked a lot on that but also we want to use paramagnetic material so this shape is designed in order to um, uh, in order to uh, uh, absorb um, absorb um, two vibration the vibration that comes from the sky and the vibration comes from the earth which mm -hmm. we refer to it as Schumann resonance now Schumann resonance and the sky radiation is very essential in photosynthesis and growth of bi process and function of biological system. Mm -hmm. So this is trying to serve those purposes. And then again, you know, we don't want to put any pesticide, herbicide, and all that. We can multiply the production of potatoes at least seven to ten times, and the ten, uh, seven to ten times almost put the tomatoes and all that. that I so where do they with. grow here? Where do you? So where do you, how big is this structure and where do you set the plants? This is the, the modular, if you notice the plants go inside here. Okay. Yeah. But this can be pretty much, if you notice there is two dishes here, east and west. If you, if you look at this dish here. You have to be careful with the mic. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no it's uh, just a sound. So it's gonna, they're going to hear it really loud. <laughs> this thing here, it's all focused as much as this one is focused here. They both, you know, you notice they bring east and west uh, radiation in. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we don't have any metal at the bottom, so we have the Schumann resonance coming from the top. So that creates easier peristalsis. Peristalsis means contraction and expansion. If you look at your blood vessel, for example, it has to do this contraction and expansion to move the blood. Mm -hmm. Your nervous system has to do the same thing. The motion of uh, water, uh, uh, blood, or anything, it has to be accommodated by rotation, vortation, and peristalsis. All things move in field and flow by those three motions. And that's why mathematics is a dialect of fragmentation, like you say 5.6 people or 2.5 uh, trees. You can do that. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a dialect of... Now, geometry is a dialect of no motion. So we are looking at things in a state of false assumption of no motion, which doesn't exist. So if you do have a pendant jewelry or a mm. geometry that you want to have a health effect. Like yours? Well, like that, you know, or many <laughs> others, you know. It has to connect us to a field 
which has those three emotions, so that field can have effect on us. Hmm. Otherwise, it's all decorative. And this is not decorative here? No, these are all have cognitive perception, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's why, you know, we want to work with phi, not pi. Yeah. And those are the two major principles in phi diversity. Or um, when I'm talking about uh, economic application of that, industrial application, architecture, uh, uh, plants, agriculture, all of that, if you be respectful to those two principles, then they become sustainable. How much of it would you say is in place in the world right now? To it that was, nature yeah, or aligned? Yeah. Have you identified some? Or are you working on there some There are project? some places, you know, yeah, that, that they have they have done, especially nomadic practices or cultures, they do that. Mm -hmm. But what happens soon as becomes modern and industrialization, yeah. then we just go toward the modernization. Modernization is, me is means mechanization, automation by energetic processes. Mm -hmm. But nature is automated by synergetic processes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have created a lot of um, addictive behavior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the addiction is to energetic addiction, mm. which becomes it becomes fatal and um, uh, lethal conveniences. Extreme cases of that is a cell phone. Mm. It's a very fatal and lethal convenience. You don't use any cell phones. No, no cell phones. <laughs> We had to come to this man all the way to, yeah. to, to isn't isn't he awesome? I mean, this is a lot of information. This is so much, and I, I know we can do, I, I know, and I definitely want to do so many more, you yeah. know, and more probably some topics including the health and using yeah. plants and, but tell us about these because I'm sure everybody's been watching those. What are yeah, these? Those are. Um, uh, uh, That's crisp. juicy. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it has a it's yeah, it's just sort of, you want it, it's like tangerine. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's it's coming from Brazil. These are basically different uh, types of calcite that they have some uh, trace minerals and that what it changes the color. Mm. So what happens, you know, in most of my building again, you know, uh, we have to one of the other concepts in building is zero green, not green movement. Uh, green movement is that band-aid strategy it's more of marketing gimmick you know what we mean by zero green that means this house that I'm building it was resulted as cutting zero number of trees zero green to do my house mm -hmm. not just because uh, it, it's a uh, green for gimmick so that's why we refer to zero green and then we refer to zero insulation now, zero insulation means there is no resistance to flow of heat. Mm. But then how do we warm up or cool our house? Mm -hmm. They did it all along the history. They didn't have insulation until hundred years ago. American Indians, if you go um, to Mesa Verde, you notice you know, they had big rock salts inside the building. There is a city in uh, northern Africa, northwest, by a city called Taqaza that they just ex explored that. And it's northwest of, I think, northeast of Timbuktu, hmm. if you know where that is, <laughs> that the city was built all with salt. The reason the salt has a lot of heat storage capacity. It's the storage of the material we want not resistant to a flow of heat because the whole concept, concept as I mentioned to you, the universe works on cause and effect. And also it works on the principle of field and flow. Like you have a magnetic field and you hold the wire, electricity goes through it. Mm -hmm. If you have electricity going in the wire, it creates a field around that. Mm -hmm. So when you have a good field, let's say a field of people around you that they are very aspiring, you get aspired mm -hmm. because that field increases your flow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you are around people who are not, I mean, I'm, I shouldn't say, but I mean, they, they are not awakened. All of a sudden you fizzle out. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just a feeling, an emotion. So therefore, you know, field and flow means, you know, we don't want to insulate a house. We want to use material that holds heat and gives it at a certain time by a process we call attenuation or heat storage. So that's why you notice all of the ancient um, architecture, they use that principle. It's just like the issue of Pastorian medicine, germ and, uh, and Bochamp, you know, those two uh, adversaries, uh, um, 
host and uh, germ mm-hmm. theory. Mm-hmm. The same thing in the building. It's in storage versus conduction. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that determines the whole new way of... Uh, so I never put insulation in any of my buildings. So how do you go now about, um, just in general, transforming those different areas that you have noticed things are not accurately... Uh, you know, false assumptions. Yeah. But I mean, how do you go about this? Because this is huge. Yeah. You're you're you're, yeah. you're breaking apart everything that has been created. Yeah. So, it created in past a few hundred years in the context of modernization. Mm, so, how do you go yeah. about it now? Now, civilization is the contrast to modernization. Now, what happened? Civilization means you know we are concurrent, subcurrent, incurrent with natural processes. So we are not destroying this uh, environment we are in, you know, this body we are in and all that stuff. So how do we go with it? It's just one concept. Mm -hmm. If you can grasp on that and you can use it in any style which is based on your personality and personage. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So um, every person can use it according to their own personage. That is the healing of the process of energy to synergy. And if I pass away you know and I want people remember me by one thing it's just the conv- uh, the paradigm shift from energetic perception and cognition to synergetic so and then you can apply it to any which way you are doing your life I mean you're doing filming you're doing agriculture gardening you're doing whatever process of industry if you just can implement that in your own style so that's the paradigm yeah, shift that's the paradigm shift paradigm healing Thank you. Yeah, because if we don't have a paradigm shift or yeah. healing, we'll end up with reality shaft. With reality shaft? Shaft. That means that we get hit with the shaft in our head. You know? I mean, all of a sudden things break down, you know, and uh, become obsolete, you know, and uh, uh, that's why we are at that cross section of the history that economically we are in trouble, architecturally, agriculturally. 80, 70, 80% of the agrable land, all the living organisms have died because of pesticide, herbicide, and all that, all of our food, our GMO, you know, chemical, this and all that. You notice every which way, we, every discipline we put our finger, because of that energetic, uh, s- the symptoms of the energetic process, we are in trouble. So we are at the juncture of the history that, uh, that's why I said it's either shift or shaft. Mm-hmm. Now, what happens if you look at all global problems, if you want to condense them into a few words, it's basically can be seen in perspective of energy, food, health, education, and shelter. Those five things. So you have food, you have, um, uh, I mean, uh, food, energy, shelter, health, and education. So if we just do uh, this shift in a paradigm healing in those five things, a lot of things shifts mm. and becomes preventive measure rather than solutionary. So how yeah. does it look like in education, for example? Oh, uh, education, you know, it becomes a, a sort of exchange. If you, I mean, the good um, example I've had, there are many people in the history, for example, Plato and Socrates. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have taught us to be focused, specialized, right, and objective. We have to become subjective, a uh, pre- peripheral vision rather than a focus, so you can see the whole thing to connect the dots, not just one thing. And at the same time, you don't want a specialization because you want self-sufficiency. Because the specialization is that me and you or whoever know more and more about less and less until we know everything about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so there is some of these shifts you know, we have to do in education, so we have educational issues. But in the architectural part, uh, about 30-some years ago, uh, I did this thesis, which in order to have a sustainable home or a building, we cannot go just purely to agriculture or architecture. I developed a term which is called solar architecture, solar agriculture and architecture. That means a home that you reside in, instead of being consumer of food, because you have to bring food in, instead of being consumer of energy, that you have to plug it in somewhere to be on the grid. And instead of have healing effect, that people get sick in it, which we have sick building syndrome, it has to be converted in a paradigm shift, it has to be producer of food. So most of my buildings have a greenhouse to produce food, 
good food for the people who live in that house. And then, you know, it has to be passive solar, so it produces its own energy. So you don't have for heating and cooling, you have to connect to the grid. At the same time, it has to have biometrical arrangement to produce the vibration that does the healing. Mm. Because that can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a project in uh, Costa Rica and other places that we are trying to create healing this situation. Because a room can have dissonating effect or resonating effect. If it has a dissonating effect, your immune system gets weak. If it has a resonating effect, you get uh, stronger. Yeah. That host. So th there is so many ways. You know, we can uh, enhance the host. Mm -hmm. Now, food goes in the body, yeah. and then it produces a synergy that comes out. Architecture is the food that's outside the body. The body goes in it, and <laughs> it, you see that. So architecture and uh, food. Both are nutrients to our peristalsis and well-being and healing. So we can never separate those two mm -hmm. things. It's not two separate things. That's why I put a solar. And we need, just like plants need sun, we need sun to activate pituitary gland. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't use, uh, uh, let's say, these, um, what do you call, fluorescent lights. We have to have <laughs> natural. <laughs> yeah. We have to have natural light to activate this thing in the brain. Uh, so what does that thing in the brain do? The pituitary, that's the one sends signals you know, to every one of your cells. <laughs> and so that it one needs natural light. It's natural lights to activate it. So that's why in the morning, it like at dawn, you know, that when you get up, when it goes in there, it activates it, and it, instead of producing a, a, a melatonin that puts you to sleep, it produces serotonin and dopamine to wake mm -hmm. you up. <laughs> so what happens, you know, uh, and the, and this, the same way, you know, we need sunlight for photosynthesis. Architecture needs sun for its peristalsis and processes of adjusting its environment. You need food to set up the temperature inside your house. Now, that food that you are in and the food that goes in you, they both have to have those attributes. So that means building has to have the same attributes as a healthy food. Mm -hmm. We have to have healthy building. Food goes in, we go in. Yeah. In, in this, you see, see, it's, it's worse because everything is uh, open and both ways in uh, nature. It's not one way. So, is it is is setting an intention before we eat or when we're eating or drinking or having a gratitude or a prayer actually is a small step for us as individuals, yeah. like, you know, listening yeah. Yeah. that really has a, an impact? Does yes. it? That's a good step because that changes the synergetic attributes, like Emo Dr. Emoto has shown. When you have good things or you have good environment for this water or you hold it and you have good intention and all that, immediately, instantly this change. That's why when it goes in the pituitary gland, as soon as a signal is given to it, it takes it and carries it mm. to the cell. But in the middle, if I have, you know, um, injurious um, passage or injurious thoughts and all that, it changes instantly. So that's the synergetic attribute of water. But elemental attribute of water cannot be ignored, they both is necessary. You know, yeah, I yeah. can pull some stuff here so we can show <laughs> you uh, off the shelf here if you want. Yeah. See, if I take a pure bottle of water, mm -hmm. this could have all kind of energetic, you pray to it, whatever you do, you know, and all of a sudden it's perfect geometry like Dr. Imhotu has shown under the microscope. But there is a hidden fact about water and it's called ion. When the water is ionized, all the material which is in that is invisible to you. You don't have any invisible. And if I take, come and take that energy away from uh, this, all of a sudden, it, everything drops and you have that much stuff that you could not see it. And this goes in the nervous system, which is very microscopic tubes, that the water has to go one molecule at a time to take the uh, uh, signal from here to the rest of the body it clogs it. That's why all of a sudden our nervous system does not work. There's nothing wrong with the heart, but if my nerves that goes from my T2, T2, T3, you know, from the back of my neck to the heart is clogged by this water, then it doesn't get signal and they say uh, the heart doesn't work. There's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. the light bulb, but the connection is there. You know. So that's why this thing goes and clogs. And also it clogs the receptors of the cell. Now you notice if I do the same process with um, distilled water, it's pretty clear. Now when I 
Yeah, it's a bit at the they, they, that's yeah. was a salt, you know, that I added mm -hmm. to it, you know. But you notice uh, the difference between these two water. Yeah. Now, what happened here... <laughs> <laughs> now, if I wash my equipments and all that, you notice uh, this is the junk that I get out of the equipment. So all of what this... What equipment? Uh, the, that, that I deionized this, you know. Oh. So what happens, all of a sudden you notice that this kind of a stuff, when it goes in the body, it becomes cement. Because yeah. these are all minerals, calcium, and all that stuff, with a little heat and all that stuff. All of a sudden, as we get older, the joints are clogged, and the arteries are clogged, you know. And that just, you know, uh, see, this water was supposed to cleanse and bring these out, and here we are loading it. Now, this water, if you notice, uh, uh, this has zero TDS, that means total dissolved solid. And this one here had 222 mm. uh, parts per million, you know, xenosis all of a sudden. Now I have had, you know, water, which is, this is like, this one here is the tap water, is 280. So you notice all of a sudden these water, it goes and clogs our nervous system. And Can we take actions to unclog it on our it's, end? Yeah, it's very, uh, I mean, that's a, uh, uh, we, we need a road is there small it. steps? <laughs> or is it small well, steps? It, it, it takes time, you know, because all of a sudden these things, you know, has clogged because these uh, nervous systems yeah. are all tubes that water mm -hmm. flows through it. Mm -hmm. Now you have to do a road and route it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> clean it up, yeah. <laughs> so that's why all of a sudden you notice not paying attention to water. Now, it's not my ideas or yours, but if all we have to do, look at the empirical, observation we have in the nature how does the water is delivered to living things mm -hmm. it vaporizes you know it goes up there it distills and comes back down mm -hmm. now you know, this uh, despite the fact you know we have a lot of pollution now we get you know, so that we have interrupted that process but basically uh, nature provides us with distilled water so all i have to do i don't need to know any science i just have to be a Monkey Consciously, see, monkey do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this is this has been a yeah. very enriching conversation. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, yeah, Doctor yeah, Mosan. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Thank you so much, my beautiful co-creator. This was wow, isn't it? This is juicy. This is what I call juicy. Yeah. Thank you for bringing so many new yeah. elements yeah. to our mind and yeah. and let's synergize, guys. Okay. Much <laughs> love. <laughs>